All right, guys, I am super excited to share um, this topic with you, how to keep your clients motivated, because I feel like it's one of those topics that, you know, we're so excited in the beginning when they, you know, reach out to us and they're excited and we get them on a plan, but then over time they lose steam and I feel like we just don't address it enough. And so I'm really excited to kind of share a little bit about my own experience, but also share some really good tips to help you to help them pass the motivational slump. So, all right, so I am Casey Smith and I am a powerhouse founding mentor, member and certified financial coach. <clears throat> I'm also a budget and debt management specialist and a certified profit first professional. So if you know anything about me, I have a new puppy that eats everything. So when you don't see me coaching, you'll see me babysitting this toddler baby dog. <laughs> And um, she's been pretty good, except a couple weeks ago, she ate my AirPods. So no, that was not so much fun. Um, didn't enjoy that at all. Um, okay, let's get down to the rest of it. All right, let me get over here. So this presentation does not promote or encourage any illegal activities. All content provided by this workshop and myself is meant for educational purposes only. That is only to bring a little humor into this today and to, um, and to have fun with what we're doing today. How to keep your clients motivated deep dive. So the deep dive will be this coming Thursday. We're doing something a little different. We're gonna try it on a Thursday evening to see if more people can attend, but I'm gonna elaborate more on this subject and go almost to a full hour of uh, some of the tools that I use and literally giving you some deliverables that night that you can take away and use with your clients to help them become more motivated. So I'm excited about that. If you can't make it, it will be uh, recorded. Although you must be a member of our Powerhouse Coach Collaborative Group. So if you've not, if you don't know anything about that, um, be sure and check it out on our website and uh, we'll get more information about that. And, and I think Sarah might drop that link down into the chat, we'll see. All right. These are some previous workshops that we've had. So if you've missed any of our free workshops, make sure that you go back to our website. We've got them all pre-recorded there and you're more than welcome to look at those and, uh, and revisit the ones you've missed. Here we have our Powerhouse Coach Collaborative. This is our paid face, our paid group that we do through Heartbeat. And this is where we have more weekly accountability we have a monthly deep dive training that I just spoke about. We have coach connection matchups. We literally get matched up with another coach for a few weeks and we get to collaborate with them. We get to get to know them better and hold each other accountable to some things that we wanna accomplish. And it's just a great way to have a more intimate setting. So we would love to invite you to come and check that out. We have a coaching tools library. I mean, we've got so much more. So be sure and check out. We have a free 14 day trial period if you wanna just come and try us out and see what we're all about. We also have our financial coach client workbook that we put together. We're really proud of this. And this is a done for you workbook. All you do is uh, use it for your clients. And um, it's kind of got all some steps that you take to take your client through. And um, it really helps the process when you're coaching clients. But then becoming a powerhouse coach conference 2022 we have our single sessions or our eight session bundle ready to go so if you have missed that last year you're more than welcome to go and check out some of those um those videos as well and see if you'd like to go there we have the qr code so feel free to check it out by putting your phone next to the qr code and they'll send you directly to our website all right i go backwards all right why we're here so we started this mission um back a couple of years ago and we decided we wanted to be a place where you could have real solutions for real coaches so we wanted to be a one-stop shop where you could come to us have questions answered and just have that support that you needed as a coach to be able to grow your business and grow your um your foundation on your knowledge of coaching. So that's what we love to do. 
All right, let's get to what motivation is. So motivation is an internal condition that activates or energizes behavior and gives direction. It is the desire to act in service of a goal. It is crucial element in setting objectives and then bringing them to fruition. So now that we kind of know what motivation is, and, and we've all experienced motivation a little bit, but now that we know what it is, I think it's really important that we visit and we understand what causes the lack of motivation, because this is really key important to our clients. Um, so maybe they've set unrealistic goals. Maybe they feel defeated because they haven't quite made much progress. And so therefore they kind of don't feel like they want to continue or they don't know how to continue. Um, so that's one way. Number two, maybe they've had negative reinforcement um, in their lives. So maybe they've had one bad situation ruin their mood or their resolve because they forgot about the previous sessions they've had with you and all of the good things that went well. So maybe they also have someone that's not in line with their goal. Maybe they're surrounded by people that don't understand what they're doing. Um, and this could go for any type of coach. It could go for a business coach. It could go for a financial coach. It can go for a health coach, a wellness coach, um, any type of coach out there. When your clients lose motivation, usually it's other people naysaying about what they're doing as they go through this process and they don't understand what they're going through. So explaining to them, and here's what I say, you know, just because we have one flat tire doesn't mean we stop driving altogether. I always tell them it doesn't mean you're going to go out and you're going to flatten the other three just because one's flat. <laughs> so um, so we need to, to change that. And I'm going to teach you guys how to change that negative reinforcement. Lastly, maybe they have no sense of progress. So this could be not seeing the, the small progress along the way. And this happens a lot. And so I'm going to share a little bit more about that here in a bit about how we can continually show them the progress they've made, no matter how little or small it is. So these are some of the things that we hear from our clients like I don't know if I can do this anymore. I feel like I'm not getting anywhere. This is hard. I want you to pick up on these type of things that your clients say, because this is where you come in with the shining light. This is where you start to, to show them how they can finish the progress, the journey strong. And so I want you to listen to what their verbiage is, listen to the things they're telling you, because more or less, they're just reaching out for support. They want help. They want to know how to get past this feeling that they're feeling. All right, so what's the opposite of all those things I mentioned? Obviously, it's setting realistic goals. So this is essential for motivation. This is the time it might be ready to reevaluate their goals and to help them align them with what's happening in their family right now. My husband always calls it re reposition. He's a firefighter. So it's like we always are repositioning when we're getting into a fire or going into a, a a situation where it could be harmful. So this is where we want to look at the goals. Once they set goals in the beginning, that's great. But sometimes these goals will shift and change over time. So we have to be able to reposition with them. And I would say there's, gosh, there's dozens of ways to set goals with your clients out there. And they can be some, I think we've all heard of the SMART methods, you know, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound. Um, there's also the one word goal. Maybe somebody adopts one word and that's their word, maybe word of the year, and they set their intentions around that goal. There's also visual goals. People are sometimes more visual. So sometimes a coach will set those visual goals. Maybe it's a picture or something that represents what they want to achieve. Um, there are so many types of goals. We're talking spiritual, career goals, fitness goals, family goals, um, socials, you know, whatever kind of goal you're looking for, this can relate to all of those types. All right. And I, you know what, I will tell you, I'm just going to tell you this up front. I'm going to share more detail in my deep dive on exactly how I teach my goal setting exercise. 
um, to where clients will 100% reach their goals every single time and without failure. Now, sometimes they come in with anticipation of failure, but but my method really has them have success 100% of the time. So make sure you come to that deep dive because you're going to come away with a, a deliverable that's going to show you exactly how I'm going to take that client through the goal setting process to set them up for success. All right, second, positive reinforcement. So this is the opposite of the negative reinforcement that I was talking about. Um, praises, achievements. So you might start off, you know, after you've heard these negative comments from your clients, you might say, do you remember when we were first started that you felt blank? Like you felt a certain way. Maybe you fatigued, tired, you were overweight, you were out of breath, like that might be an indication of somebody that's a fitness coach, right? Or you might say, or do you remember you didn't have any direction regarding your eating habits, your finances, like bringing them back to that moment that led them to reach out to you in the first place. Or when we first started, you mentioned that the reason that you were doing this was because blank. This is getting back to their why and trying to them to understand what their why really reinforces. Oh, sorry about that. Let me get back to this. So and I want to talk a little bit more about your why, because I feel like this is uh, something more deep rooted that we have to bring to the forefront of our conversations with our clients more often than not. Um, here's a quick action step that you can do with your client um to remind them of their why is um because goals lose their meaning when the reasons we want to achieve them are no longer important to us so this is when i was talking about reevaluating um if you want to get them motivated and stay motivated that's where we have to find those deep-rooted reasons so have your clients do this small step have them create sticky notes on a piece of paper or whatever and put them around the house so that they see what is their why it may be more than one reason why it may be just one reason why but have them put it on a sticky note and put those sticky notes in places around their house so they're going to see it because they're going to be able to look at that subconsciously and remember why they're eating better why they're exercising why they're tracking their finances, whatever it is that they're doing, this is going to bring them always back to their why. So, and then here's the thing, just know that the reasons why they want to achieve something can be a powerful motivator in itself, but they can't be superficial reasons. They, they can't be, because Johnny wants me to lose weight. Okay, well, that's not really a deep-rooted reason why you want to lose weight. So we want to have it to be more centered towards what they want and what they desire. And lastly, tracking your progress. This is a no brainer. It is essential to keep track of your clients projects uh, or progress to show them how far they've come since they started working with you. As human beings, we are hardwired to want to finish. We want to go to the finish line. We crave competition. And you may, some people may say, no, I don't, but each of us a little bit does like to cross off our to do list items and finish and then move to the next thing. So this again can be geared towards any type of coaching, but measuring metrics is just one way that a client can stay uh, motivated. <clears throat> Small wins are massive motivators, but we rarely recognize them. And so the problem is that with these small wins, they are notoriously hard to measure. And worse or more often, we tend to ignore them. And that cannot fare well with your clients. So in Atomic Habits, James Clear says, elite performers will often measure, quantify, and track their progress in various ways. Each little measurement provides feedback. It offers a signal of whether they are making progress or they need to change course. And then he goes on to say, the most effective form of motivation is progress. When we get a signal that we are moving forward, we become more motivated to continue down that path. And I always say as a coach that we can see a little bit farther than they can see. And this is to their advantage because not only does this information of progress 
provide them a visual remembrance of where they started, but it also is a measurement of how far they've come. So I'll give you an example. If you're a fitness coach, maybe it's body measurements or how their clothes are fitting. If you're a health coach, maybe clients are feeling more energetic and have less symptomatic problems with their health um, in certain areas because they're eating better. So these are all things that we can use to measure progress. If you're a financial coach, maybe it's monitoring how much debt they've paid off in a certain period of time or how much they've saved in a certain period of time. So use whatever is relevant to your coaching practice and whatever will help um, for your clients to continue to progress the small or large amounts of progress they're making. All right, bonus point. So how do you keep your clients engaged? Like what is a good way to keep your clients engaged? So what I do is I have them keep a journal. Um, it can be a financial journal, wellness journal, uh, food journal, like there are several types of journals out there. And so create one that is relevant to your coaching experience. So reflection is key. It allows them to look in the rear view mirror for a moment and then to look through the front windshield of where they are now, and then to articulate it on paper what those possibilities could be and what's to come. So it's creating that visual, which is super imperative for them. I'm a very visual person, and if you can pick that up on your clients, it will really help them to see how far they've come. All right, so that's, and I'll talk more about this journaling. Um, you'll see here in a bit. So here's our recap. So why we wanna keep clients motivated and that's one of the single most important pieces of our coaching practice. So why? Why is it important to keep our clients motivated? Basically, we wanna see them succeed. We want them to win in health, fitness, wellness, finances, spirituality, whatever field you're in, we want it. Sometimes, unfortunately, we want it more than they want it, um, but we want to see them win because when they win, we win. Um, win. There's no right or wrong time to start planting seeds of encouragement for your clients. So the more often you can keep them a little bit excited about the end result, then you've done a great job. And then how? By being their biggest cheerleader and finding the good in their journey, no matter how big or small. I had clients recently that were just feeling a little defeated. Now, this is where you can pick up on body language. So they come to my meeting and they're slumped over and the husband's like this and like this, like they, you can just tell they're just not feeling the meeting. They're not engaged. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to talk about anything. They're just feeling super defeated. So I picked up on this body language and I really asked them some questions about what it is that is making them feel this way. Um, and sometimes I'll say, okay, on a scale of one to 10, how did this month go for you? Is there anything you would have done differently? Or is there anything that came up that you didn't anticipate? And usually this is when they just word vomit. They just tell you everything that happened. You can't believe this, you know? And so this is where you can really start to understand what they're going through. And, um, and then I can start being that cheerleader for them. And so I said to them, wait a minute, in month one, this is where you were at when we started. Look today, you have it. And this is because I'm a financial coach. Well, you have an emergency fund in place. You are on a budget. You're following the budget. Or if you're a fitness wellness coach, you're following the food, you are losing inches, your, bo your body, you know, is changing because your clothes don't fit anymore. Like we need to re-emphasize the things that are really happening in their life because they're, they're in their body every day. But when they come to me and, and I see in their budget, the changes, or you see in their appearance, if you're a fitness coach and you see in their appearance, you're like, my gosh look at your biceps look at like these are the things we want to point out to them because this is where we see farther than they see we see the potential in them and they want someone to believe in them all right back to the journal i wanted to revisit this journal part because um 
journaling is one of the things I put in my 23 ways to foster motivation for your clients. So you will receive this today free for attending this workshop. I have put this to list together based on my own experiences. It is general coaching related. So no matter what coaching field you're in, this is going to apply to you. So you will, we will send this to you today. I'm so excited for you to see all the things I have on here that have really helped me to keep those clients engaged and motivated. The more that you can keep them engaged, I'm telling you, you've created a client for life. I have clients that have been working with me for several years and it's because they know I care and I always am investing in their life, whether it's something I need to send them, whether it's uh, just a, a word of the day or, hey, I'm thinking about you, whatever it is, they know that I've got their back. All right, let's go on. I'm super excited about this. So here's what I always say. If you can get if I can get you a little excited about the journey, then I've done a huge part of my job because excitement breeds change and with change there is victory. And I tell this to all my clients because sometimes they're just not excited to start this journey with me because a lot of it's they don't understand, they don't know, they think they're gonna fail, um, whatever it is. But if you can get them a little excited about some part of the process that you're gonna take them through, then you've really done a, a bigger job than you think you've done. All right. so. This is the deep dive. I hope you'll join me this coming Thursday, 4.30 Pacific time, 7.30 Eastern time, where I'm going to go into a lot more of extrinsic, intrinsic motivation. There's a lot more to that. I, it's not enough time today to get through that. And then we have Adrienne's free workshop coming up. So that's Saturday, May 13th. And she's going to talk about breaking down the steps to bringing your clients in alignment with their values. So this is a really packed 30 minute workshop you're not going to want to miss as well so i want to go ahead and answer any questions that you might have um, anything you've been thinking about that you want to run by me is there anything yeah i've got some questions here casey um this was really great so how do you unpack a client's stated goal if you identify that the why is actually someone else's, like the losing weight for someone else or the career path is for their parent, you know, the one that their parent set them on. How do you unpack that? I think it's reframing it. it it's, it's taking the other person out of the equation, like because they're not a factor in their success and they're not going to be because they're not the, the invested party. So getting to understand that they're the ones that are investing in what that end goal looks like and that every step they take is one of their own action steps. They can't take the action step of somebody else, but they can take ownership of the action step that they're taking for their own goal. So if the goal is geared towards somebody else's wants or needs, then they're going to fail because then there's going to become resentment, bitterness, there's going to be some division there and we don't want any of those distractions so what we want to do is get them focused on what they truly want and sometimes when i've unpacked this with clients it never was about that goal it ended up being some other goal so be prepared that it may not be the goal that they think it is and really get them to if you have to put them on a journaling exercises where they have to, you give them some prompts to journal, and this is something we will also talk about at the next deep dive, um, some journaling prompts that will get them to start asking questions for themselves as to what really matters to them. Because once they see the beauty in that and they start to see the changes in their finances, their body, their eating, whatever, then they can claim that victory for themselves, not for look what I did for you. Mm, that's great. So speaking of journaling, um, a question that came in was how often do you assign or request that they sit down with it? And then do you designate time in session to specifically go over their entries? So it depends on the client. There are some clients I will have them do a weekly journal prompt that I will send them every Monday. And them and their spouse, their partner, or if they're single, will need to complete that by our next session. And my sessions are every two weeks, so it gives them plenty of time to go over that and to journal that. And sometimes I have client, uh, husband, wife journal separately, depends on what they're going through emotionally with their journey. 
Um, so yes, I will ask them, is there anything you want to share today in our session that will help us to uncover any obstacles that have kept you from, you know, from where you want to be? So we will talk about that. If not, it can be personal to them, but really it's just a measurement just so they can go back and like, oh gosh, do you remember when we first started? I was feeling this and, and you, they go back and look. That's great. I love that. Thank you. Um, you kind of already touched on this, but a question that came in was how do you highlight your client's progress when they can't see it? Cause I, I know I've had this happen. Clients have told me that they haven't had any wins since the last time we met. So tracking is great. So I will have them sometimes, and this is on that 23 um, ways to keep your clients motivated. It could be a visual tracking. It could be a to-do list that you have them mark off, maybe something in their workbook of action items that they have to, you know, that they have to go through. Maybe it's highlighting um, where they were. Maybe they lost 10 pounds or maybe they lost 20 inches since their last weigh in, weigh in or measurements. It's always bringing that to the surface again because they might know it in their head, but when someone else recognizes it, they're like, oh, you noticed? Like, yeah, I noticed. I noticed you saved about $600 in interest this last two, two months because we did X, Y, and Z. So if you can always look for the good and where they're at, no matter how small, they're gonna grab onto it. Yeah, um, to piggyback on that, I also identify sometimes the boundary wins of saying no to a family member. Uh, when it came to like going to eat out or something or a friend, you know, if the red is a priority or if their food habits are a priority. So that's great. That's the questions that I had. If anyone wanted to unmute and uh, waste a question. So uh, I got to drop to another event, but thank you very much for the session, ladies, and good to see you all. Thank and, you. Uh, blessings to your house and ours. All right. So I'll wrap this up if nobody else has any other questions. Um, we would love for you to join us for our 2023 Powerhouse Coach Conference. We are so excited about this. Um, we'll be coming to you live from the Florida Keys and we have early bird ticket prices going on. You can either, I think Sarah's gonna drop the link in the chat or you're more than welcome to put your phone up to our QR code and it'll take you directly to our website. And, and help you there. Remember today, we're gonna give you that PDF for free, 23 ways to help motivate your clients and to foster that motivation. We wanna make sure that you as a coach continue to help your clients um, in their path to victory because that's where, that's where I wanna be. I wanna be in the victory lane with my clients. And the best way to do that is to motivate them along the way. All right, any other questions? All right. All right, well, I am so glad you were here today and um, I cannot wait to uh, send you what we have for you. And I hope that you make it to our Thursday evening meeting. And um, I hope everybody has an awesome, great day.